Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Sid here from 3 Mississippi. Thanks for clicking on the video. Today, as you can see behind me, we have garden work to do. It is fall and that means it's time to get that garlic in the ground and those deer plots ready. Let's get after it. Mike driving back up with the tractor right now from the deer plots. Uh, Frankie is actually deconstructing the other side of the garden, taking out the uh, old drip tape and the T-posts and things from the tomatoes, uh, that everything that's done from summer and spring. And the other night she burned the holes in the, the mesh plastic here that covers the row. This is all going to be garlic. So this whole 100 foot row is all going to be garlic and that is what's going to go in the ground today. So we thought we heard him coming back but he's actually telling a separate area so we are going to go take a peek. I know that he's got the two deer plots that he's doing on that pasture so we're going to go take a look and see. No, nope, he's telling Just the same spot. Just kidding, I don't know what's going He's on. He's tilling the same <laughs> spot that he has been tilling. Oh, he well, till I else. thought he was doing two deer plots. I have no, no idea. No. Nobody tells me anything in this house. If he house. was doing two deer plots, he would go down there and do silver. Well, all but right. But we're not tilling this. <laughs> compost this whole plot because that's going to take no. you a minute no <clears throat> so i added lime and i'm going to add uh some npk triple 13 uh that's just your, like your nitrogen your potassium and uh your uh did your hamster fall off the wheel phosphorus p potassium k there we go um it always trips me up. I don't know why. It starts with a P, but two of them start with a P, so they got to throw a K in there. Yeah, these people that make up elemental tables. Anyway, but I, and I was not going to put compost in this deer plot, but then I thought, you know, this one leading edge that's going to be closest to um, our hunting blind, I thought I'm going to go ahead and put a couple uh, scoops of compost in there and till it in, 
and then we'll just observe over the season like did that compost make a big enough difference to what grows in that one strip and if so i mean we'll we'll compost the whole thing next year so uh, i don't want to waste time if it just makes a minimal difference though so that's where we at <laughs> Put a little 25 psi uh, pressure regulator down here on the end of this. When you're using drip tape, you want to make sure that you're not sending too high of pressure water into the drip tape, cause it to bust or whatnot. So that's what we're doing right now. You just connect all the connectors together until you build something. Cool. It's like Lego. Okay. This is very yeah. own erector set. That's right. He said he's going to be your right-hand man. Well, I'm on the left-hand side. So uh-oh. <laughs> we got Alan here for reinforcements now. Redneck ingenuity. From your farm action go back. That's right. room for me to get my tape around this without you don't have to take the other one off well probably the right way to do it be to take them screws out but i'm notorious for not doing it the right way notorious yeah notorious <laughs> you don't think that's correct grammar <laughs> you're not sure though <laughs> that's funny It's a leak. Yeah, it's a leak tape. It's a leak tape. I found those leaked tapes from the government. So we're over here at our neighbor Alan's shop, his metal shop, wood shop, everything shop, right? right. And uh, if you have seen a previous video where he built us a row builder, that thing worked amazing. And what happened was people who saw it went to his Etsy and wanted to order one for themselves, right? But it was a challenge with that, wasn't it? Yes. The, the weight of the steel. Right. This stuff right here is umpteen pounds per foot. Right. And that's too costly to ship. So we decided, let's make the heavy metal, let the new owner make it out of wood. Right. Like a, a tube of 10, tube of 12. And I would just make some brackets. So you redesigned these brackets, didn't right, you? Right, we did. We, uh, I made it to where the brackets could be either, they'll be bolted to your Kubota tiller. What, what's? Land you know, Pride. Land Pride right. tiller. And Which, then, by the way, I already looked, uh, the same feet are on the Titan Tiller and the John Deere 
tiller. Okay. So, so it, this is very universal. universal. One bracket will bolt to your tiller, and on the tiller, the bottom hole will use the bolt and threaded nut on the back side in that position. And all you'll have to do is the top hole will have to drill all the way through one plate on your tiller and then put a bolt in there. And then that's anchored and you can leave that on at all times. Then the other plate, if you use a, if you have to supply your own steel, this can be bolted or welded onto your steel. If you use like a two by 10 or two by 12, this will be bolted like this, about right there. You just have to set it up, get your holes aligned, drill through, anchor it, and then you're good to go. And, and then the quick, quick release pins make it to where you can disconnect right. it from the tractor. Yeah, that one goes like that. Nice. So just like on mine, the one that I currently have that you built, I can, this is sitting up here like this. That's right. I can pull those pins and, and, and drive, away, drive from, away from the row builder and leaving that right. permanently connected. Right. Perfect. Perfect. Well. So we're gonna have, I'll, I'll Michael put a link on to my Etsy shop for these. Right. The owner wants to paint them to match his tiller. Right. Green, orange, black, whatever color. Right. Yellow. That's right. You're right. Okay. All right. Well, I'll tell you what, Alan. Let's put a version of this together. Let's take my row builder off my tractor. Okay. Let's put a version of this one, the new, we're calling version 2.0. That's right. Uh, the hardwood version, whatever you want that's to call right. it. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Uh, we'll put a version of this together. We'll put it on the back of the tractor, and let's go build a row and see how it does. That sounds good. Let's All right, let's do it. All right, let's try this contraption out, Alan. Okay. <laughs> October. October is the time to plant one of my favorite, favorite crops, and that's garlic. Now, if you guys don't like vampires, this should be one of your favorite crops as well. What we're going to do is go over the process of planting garlic, why we plant it in October, and the way I do it that has been successful for me, and hopefully you guys pick something up out of this that helps you grow amazing garlic. First thing we're going to talk about is the varieties of garlic that I like to grow, okay? Now there are, if you go look at Territorial Seed or wherever your favorite place is, there are a ton of varieties of garlic. And there are things you'll need to learn like hard neck versus soft neck and whether or not you want to weave the garlic or whether or not you want more uniform cloves. Um, you know, those things come into play. For me, garlic is garlic. Uniform cloves are nice when you're doing certain things. For me, the soft neck, really the only benefit is the ability to weave it. So I'm not really growing the soft neck much. I do a little bit, but there's three varieties that I am growing this year. First variety is called music garlic. This is probably the most common garlic out there. If you buy garlic at the supermarket, if you buy garlic anywhere in America or anywhere around the world, chances are, you're buying music garlic most of the time because it grows so well and puts out the most produce per acre of land of pretty much any garlic out there. So it just makes sense to grow music garlic. It, it grows really well, it's disease resistant, it's an heirloom variety. I wanna to get to the point where I am growing seed garlic using no chemicals in our garden 
I think seed garlic is a potential opportunity uh, for me, for our farm, uh, as a revenue generator down the road. So that's why we're doing music garlic. We want to build that up uh, over the next couple of years, get, you know, our own kind of our own strain of it growing out here. Just the ones that did the best in our spot, replanting those until we have this really robust, hopefully, music garlic variety that grows well in the southeast. The next is, and I've already started busting this out, this right here, Russian red. Okay, the thing about garlic to remember is that there's different flavors of garlic slightly. They all taste like garlic, uh, but some are a little bitier, some are a little smoother. I like a little bit of a bitier garlic a lot of times, and I also like to ferment. So if I can add another flavor profile on top of just garlic, get something a little spicy, um, then I'll tend to do that. And I have found that the Red Russian is really, has got that kind of that flavor forward. I don't want to sound like a wine geek because I'm not, uh, but it's, it's, I like the flavor. We got a pound of that. We got five pounds of the music. So we got a, a few pounds of the elephant garlic. Elephant garlic, look at the size of this. This is just one, just one clove uh, from one of the bulbs. This is giant. Now, the thing to remember about elephant garlic is it's actually closer to a leek than it is to a garlic, although they're all in the same family. You know, leeks, garlic, onions, they're all in that family. But elephant garlic is closer genetically to a leek than it is to garlic, but it tastes like garlic. What we're gonna do to plant this garlic is we're gonna take our garlic and we're gonna break it like this, okay? Now, you're, you're hoping, you're hoping that you're gonna have a little bit of root attached to each piece that you break off, okay? And, uh, okay, we're gonna put these in here. If you get one that breaks out like this, where it doesn't have any, uh, any wrapping on it to, to protect it, just take that in the house immediately, put it in whatever you're gonna eat tonight and eat it, okay? Trying to leave as much of the wrapper on as you can. See that? That's bad, that's a bummer. There we go, that's what we're looking for. Okay, so you don't want to be in too big of a hurry doing this because if you're pulling the wrappers off while you're pulling these guys loose, then they're gonna they're gonna rot in the ground. They're not gonna grow. Okay, there you go. That's perfect, just like that. All right. Now we're gonna do this a whole bunch more times, and I'm gonna show you guys what we do to plant them. So here's my row. I've got it all set up with uh, it was some woven fabric. Uh, this is kind of a weed barrier. Uh, it also acts, acts a little bit like a mulch, kind of keeps some of the moisture in, uh, helps with evaporation. And the, the beautiful thing about it is the weed protection, however. So what we've done here is formed up our row with our row builder, okay? We added some amendments. We added some azomite and some lime to adjust the pH down a little, and we added some compost. We tilled all that together, formed our row, and then we came back and ran some drip tape under it. Uh, if you can see in there right there, you see that? I've got drip tape running down this side and drip tape running down this side. And then I have these three rows right here uh, that we burned in the, uh, in the fabric. And this is where we're gonna plant our garlic. So we're, we're spacing our garlic eight inches center to center and then four inches on down. When I get down to the elephant garlic, I'll actually skip a hole and I'll space them eight inches both ways. But for all the rest of this garlic, I'm spacing it four inches apart and eight inches between rows. There's probably fancier ways to do this, but I'm just gonna show you the way I do it. I'm gonna take this clove, okay? This is the root end down. This is the end that's gonna sprout up, okay? And I'm just gonna push it right down into the ground and cover it, okay? I'm gonna do the same thing right here, okay? Might have to make a little indention, push it right down into the ground and cover it, just like that. Okay, guys, the reason that we have to plant garlic in October, for most of us it's October, really what it is is you wanna plant it three, four weeks before your first frost, okay? Even a couple weeks before your first frost will be fine. But the idea here is 
this garlic's going to sprout. It's going to put some little roots down. And then winter's going to come and it's going to slow down. But what's happening during this winter is something very important called vernalization. Garlic is a perennial, okay? Uh, where a lot of things that you're used to growing, like radishes or most of your squash, those are annuals. They live for one season only and they die, okay? Some things are biannuals, like a carrot. Uh, oftentimes a carrot will go to seed its second year and then die. It won't go to seed its first year unless weather conditions trick it. Thing about garlic is it's a perennial. It'll just keep going and going and going and going and going. We don't let it keep going and going and going. We tend to harvest it after it's gone through a single winter, after it has vernalized one time. And what the vernalization process does for the garlic is it takes that bulb that's growing up and then it causes that bulb to split into all your different cloves, okay? If it doesn't know, okay, I just went through a winter, now it's spring, uh, now it's, so, you know, if it doesn't know those things because of the signs from Mother Nature, it will not split like that. You'll have this weird round single clove of garlic and it won't get as big, okay? So, very important, plant your garlic in the fall, get it established at least a few weeks before your first frost. If you're in a really cold climate, you may have to mulch it during the winter time. If you're in the southeast like we are, you will not have to mulch it. And then come spring, it's going to really start taking off. And then we'll talk as it gets closer to then how to know when to harvest. I hope this gives you guys the success that you're looking for with your garlic. And garlic is one of the most amazing things to plant in the garden. You need to be doing it. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, click the bell so you get the notifications, and uh, come back and check us out when we talk about some more gardening things or when Sid talks about chicken things. That happens too. If you like that row builder, check that link down below for Alan's Etsy shop and get yourself one. As always, guys, we appreciate you. Stay blessed and safety's off.